All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan. Uh, guess I'm actually starting uh, kind of the videos on time finally. Um, yeah, so I'm mean, having an all right night's sleep. At least it went better than two nights ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, my eyes are pretty dried out. But anyway, I spent a lot of time last night because, like, I, I almost finished the battle royale course, and uh, the problem, as always is there was a bug, right? I was able to figure out every single bug up until uh, <clears throat> up until the limitation about Photon. It's always the multiplayer scripting that always fucks everything up. Which is probably why most uh, game developers on Steam, uh, they, they always um, just make single player games. I mean, that's pretty cool and all, right? You know, but I'm not in this to make the money, right? Even though, yeah, we'll make a lot of money if I can get this shit to work. Um, you know, uh, hold on, let me hit the start button here. All right. <clears throat> but, um, whatchamacallit, you know, like the, the big thing is multiplayer gaming, right? That's, you know, it's a lot harder, but there's a reason why, like, the best, you know, uh, games and like the most valuable games are multiplayer right because you know we're no man is an island right as that saying goes so um yeah and um and i'm not i'm starting to look into using an ass a, a, a i don't even know what you call it but basically it's a it's a oh it's a visual scripting thing uh a visual script editor or whatever the hell it is let's see play maker unity let's just go to the asset store here so I looked at this like a couple years ago, right, and it just got discouraging. And I bought a couple other things kind of, that kind of do the same thing to make your own games. But now that I actually am learning programming and all that stuff, now I feel a lot more comfortable, you know, using something like this. This is geared towards people who cannot program, and they still update it. Uh, latest release was, you know, a few months ago. But apparently this doesn't actually matter because... The the got the because the support community uh, by the uh, guys who run this thing, they actually um, they, they 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 actually get bug reports and they say oh yeah we'll fix it and then we'll update it. So apparently they actually push the updates within the same version of this anyway. So uh, that that's good. So that, so I think that's what I think. So it, it comes so I, so you install hmm, it's like in a video game when you install a mod. That's exactly what this is. It kind of mods your Unity software. And they actually update the mod, right? So it doesn't actually have to update it through here. So, um, so that's actually pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, they actually make some. And then I actually looked this up on Steam. This game actually had an all right amount of things, but the problem is it's still single player. Veil Guard Steam, right? You know, let's see. The guy's charging like ten bucks. See, this guy used Playmaker, and this actually has you know like. A decent amount of reviews, right? Because usually the amount of people who bought and play the game is always going to be much greater than the number of reviews, right? Because not because most people don't. Ah, there's some itchy here. Most people don't leave reviews. So what is the percentage of people that leave reviews? Um, I don't know. We go on. I mean, if we go on my bit shoot, I mean, this is a rough approximation, but you know, out of the number of reviews, I would say. So it probably is. I don't know. This is even a good enough sample size here. Oh, by the way, thank you to the one person that subscribed. I'm kind of surprised people even watch the bit shoot. Actually, a lot of people watch it still. So, I mean, that's a good sign, right? Because that means, uh, you know, I don't have to... <laughs> uh, you know, that means I could actually move away from the political stuff, which sucks because I really love it. But, you know, deplatforming risk is a big problem. Even if I do the safe stuff, right? Because they, they actually banned Kathy Zhu uh, yesterday, right? Uh, turns out, though, um, she was trying to post uh, nudes of Cassandra Fairfax or something like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, she forgets that she's not a liberal, right? She doesn't get the protection of all, like, those liberal assholes uh, that can get away with that stuff. So, you know, she should have known better. But, I mean, that's what happens, right? When, you're, when you give a woman, especially a decent-looking woman like Kathy Zhu, so much attention, then, you, then your ego is so inflated. The god put, knocks you down many pegs. In, in this case, just took away her uh, her uh, Twitter. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Is it still suspended? Yes, it's still suspended. So, uh, yep. 
poof, gone. That's how it goes. So the cookie crumples. Uh, oh yeah, but this looks really amazing. So this is probably something that is going to be pretty similar to what I'm thinking of because there's not too many 2D games. Because uh, uh, what you might call it, then weapon dive. Yeah. So obviously, because obviously I know what I'm going to do with the graphics. Like depending on how I want to start, I'll probably buy an asset pack. So it'll be look. So it'll look kind of shitty like this. But at least it'll look like what I want it to look like, right? So I can get a rough idea of okay. Does the guy with a gun that I have it move around to animate, you know, does it fire a bullet? That's really what I, I just want basic functionality. Making it nice and pretty like this can come later, because that's when I have to actually commission uh, the game dev classifieds to make the, um, to make the, uh, whatchamacallit, to actually make the, my game can, can actually come to life. Uh, then this is somebody who wants to make something much more complicated, or, well, rather, not complicated, but, a lot better looking, like 3D game stuff, and, and so on and so forth, and all this stuff, right? Uh, and then, yeah, it has uh, also animation too. Uh, the Unity, the built-in Unity ani uh, animation thing is also really good too. So I don't have to worry about making my characters move. I just gotta make sure that the parts work. Uh, make game controls. Uh, <clears throat> prototypes, puzzle games. I, don't, I, I hate puzzles, so I never have to worry, worry about it. Uh, networking support. Hmm. Shows how to start a server, connect as a client. Play in the editor and click start server, connect as a client in the web player standalone. So obviously this is the most important part I want to be looking at. 32 connections. Uh, this thing also supports Photon, which I really don't want to use because yesterday I run, I run into a bug because the syntax is correct. In fact, my code is identical to the course. Um, but because Photon is constantly changing and Unity is constantly changing, like, you know, code that works like two months ago doesn't work now. And it's very annoying. Uh, and that's why I don't want to use Photon. But, you know, I might have to, right? Because, A, it might also be cheaper because I use Photon for the networking and multiplayer shit. So when people come in the other. Photon seems to actually pay for all the bandwidth, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, that's why they charge so much for very few concurrent players, because that's how they make up their money. Uh, and then I just use, and then I integrate with Microsoft's uh, PlayFab to just simply store the database, which is pretty cheap for them, right? So it's like, uh, now I have to use two fucking services at once. It's, it's really crazy. But imagine if you had to do all of that on your own, and you had to code it from scratch. That's why MMORPGs always cost it like hundreds of millions of dollars to fucking make. And then of course, they're, uh, all the programmers are in some kind of union or something like a union. And then, uh, yeah, that, 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 <laughs> then your costs really spiral out of control. Uh, so anyway, um, I don't know, maybe we'll see what the news is. I really just don't feel like it. Um, but all in all, things are looking good crypto wise, right? So hopefully that means this will be going up soon. Uh, searches for this week is at 11 for the normie, so uh, still normies are just out of it because they're just dumb. That's why we'll get rich and they won't until it's too late. Bitcoin Dodds is at 62.5%, 24-hour value. Uh, my eyes are still dry. Uh, 165.3 billion, so it's still pretty healthy. Bitcoin has recovered back to 10,136, so very good size. So that basically means we're not, so I mean we could still drop like a rock, but you know. Uh, the the, poss the probability of it de is decreasing, and that's what we want. Uh, the scam bitcoins are up a little bit. Uh, Litecoins at seventy six ninety four, it's basically seventy seven dollars. So now it's up five sixty three percent, five point sixty three percent. So all right, so it's looking pretty good across the board. A lot of greens, a lot of flatlining, a little bit of going up. Uh, this thing is neutral. Um, however, actually, yeah, I do, I mean, I see mostly flatlining, some of it's flatlining downwards and some of it's flatlining upwards, and then some are also going down. But the stuff that's going down are all these weird cryptos that just look like flavor of the above scam coins. Mm. Excuse me, gotta make sure I burp so that I don't get hiccups. Even though I didn't eat anything, I just drink water. Uh, dog coins basically 346 million market cap that's a pretty nice looking up a little bit and then flatline so that's what we want we just want more flatlining all right because again as all those things flatline it, it'll eventually go up in price right and like nine times out of ten 
uh, yesterday, a couple of days ago, was that well, not a ten times, right? I mean, eventually, if you keep rolling the dice, you're eventually going to roll a one, right? You know, no matter what. So, steam is also up a nice amount, twenty three point seventy four cents, seventy five cents, right? So now it's up four point thirty seven percent. So this is pretty good, you know. Uh, we're doing pretty. We're pretty. We're pretty Tamaguchi. Uh, looks like the stock markets are doing okay, not a whole lot. Of course, Global Bitcoin Trust is worthless, and it's hilarious because Tony Bays insists everyone buy this shit. But it's hilarious because this thing is fucking terrible. Uh, like, I, I I honestly do not understand why people keep promoting that scammer. Right? I see him on Forbes, I see him on all these websites. It's, it's so annoying, just like Craig Wright. It's like, there's a reason why I really hate fake news and we can't do anything about it because like big tech is just going to spam all those assholes on the front of Google news. And then what are you going to do? Uh, JFC coins at three to four. So it's pretty much back to normal. Um, but it's, uh, I don't even want to check, but the 24 hour volume is like still pretty solid Four to four coin continues to struggle. Uh, but right now it's battling it out at four to five, but, uh, right now, <clears throat> Trade volume at 404 is actually pretty uh, mute. It's at like 98 bucks or 100. So it's actually been dying down quite a bit. I guess after all the chaos, people just don't want to touch 404 coin, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but of course, you know, every coin is going to have to go through their shit period. So I guess 404 coins, time has come. 2x2 two two coins also been uh, getting hit by a lot of attacks too, right? A lot of people dumping. But it's recovering at an all, at an all right, right? It's 56 to 58 Satoshis of a Bitcoin. So it's still pretty valuable and people are still buying it. So like, yeah, look at all this buying pressure. So overall, it's, you know, pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, so basically, if crypto continues to keep going up, all right, and that's not a given, but if it goes up, then I expect this to either go down a little bit more or it'll just remain a shitty low price. Right. And then the money will eventually bounce back into JMC 404 and two by two. And then we'll see how it goes back up. But stability is definitely going to be a problem uh, going forward. I mean, to be honest, we really need Bitcoin to just halve so that it'll force stability to occur. Uh, you know, because this because uh, that mental roadblock is still a problem. Now, I don't expect crypto to skyrocket immediately because that's actually not been the tradition. Like either it'll skyrocket well before it halves, and then once it halves, like the day it halves, then it actually flatlines or goes down a lot. Or it eventually skyrockets way after, right? But it ne almost, I actually cannot remember a day ever since 2010, 2011, I was following Bitcoin that like, you know, the day that any of these cryptos halved, it, it just skyrocketed in price. I think the only one exception was Litecoin when it was like three bucks and it skyrocketed like 25. Uh, I think that was just the one time. Bitcoin halving. Uh, May 12, 2020 is the approximate date. We've got 82 uh, days and 69. Oh, man, that, is, that might as well just be next year. All right, so that basically means we're in for some uh, pain for these uh, exotic cryptos. Because at that point, I mean, now that I'm going to be using Playmaker, then I'm going to be reading other tutorials. Because I still want to learn how to program, even though I'm going to be using Playmaker, simply because I just don't... Cause I don't have to figure out all this shit out by scratch, right? I just don't have the time. And more importantly, I don't want to just have to constantly deal with these stupid bugs. I may I managed to get my emotional control so I don't get like angry or even frustrated, which is which is a shock to me. So I'm glad God took that away from me, right? The anger and the frustration. I mean, it just comes with the territory. You know, I also tell myself this shit is actually pretty hard. That's why most people don't do it. That's why most of the playmaker games are single player and not fucking multiplayer. Right, because I'm actually trying to. Actually, I was in the middle of doing research. Hold on, let me uh, let me do something here in Star Wars Galaxies. It's not Star Wars Galaxies. Wait, yeah, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Uh, hold on, I need to actually ch uh, take a look at this. But um, what you call it? I was actually doing research, and then I'm like, oh, okay, let me just do my Bitcoin video before I continue. So I'm trying to see if anyone's made a multiplayer game with. Uh, uh, you know, um, eh, that can go a little higher than that. Hold on. Let me, uh, let's see. Where's my bounty hunter squad? What? I cannot. Yeah, of course. I'm fully aware of that. 
Well, yeah, the damage is gonna be so bad here. Uh, you know what? Let's use let's use my Padme squad. Um, oh man, that is so bad. All right, you know what? We'll use this. Uh, old Ben slow as shit. Yeah, we'll use him. I don't know. Will this even work very well? All right. So, but yeah, I'm trying to find some examples of it, but I, I don't actually uh, really see anything. But obviously, I just started the research last. Actually, I just really started the uh, research today because last night I was trying to figure out how to do a photon. Um, and I tried a couple of things and it didn't work. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I really do want a scripting software because that because because the first of all the bugs aren't there, and then if there is a bug. You know, the guy who does the visual scripting software, in this case, Playmaker, will already fix it within like an hour. So, you know, he's the expert. It's like, okay, like, you know, I'm sold. But I'll still have to figure out the multiplayer stuff. So that's why I still want to program. Um, and yeah, it's important to for me to learn to code because eventually I'll have to actually want, I, I probably want, I probably do want custom stuff, right? Because ultimately I want, you know, uh, you know, an actual game, right? So uh yeah so i think yeah so i'm trying to think i should be able to uh, implement a battle royale specifically the damage shield part all right because it was actually pretty easy to come up with that um so i mean i did skip over it in the course i took yesterday but there are a lot of tutorials on youtube about how to make your own battle royale in fact someone made a battle royale in like 12 minutes <laughs> so uh yeah so it's a, it's a, it's uh, that's the funny thing about you know, programming. Things that look really hard are actually very easy to program. But the flip side is things that actually look easy are actually very hard to implement. All right? You just push a button, you log in. Well, that seems easy, right? No, it does not. <laughs> There's like so much crap that goes on in behind the scenes. So, uh, yeah. But that's also why blockchain will eventually be, uh, be very powerful. Because right now it's in the, uh, you know, nobody has the code for it out. So everything's very user unfriendly, right? That's why it's not mainstream. But give it 10, 20 years, definitely 30 years, right? You know, and my ass better be, you know, uh, at least a deca millionaire, but more likely a hundred millionaire, maybe a billionaire if like, you know, I can get, I can really make a solid game. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, uh, compound coin, you know, it's gone down a bit now. Now it's at 4,100 Satoshis of a dog coin about. Compound coin's a little bit about, yeah, actually it's still around uh, 5,000 to 5,900. Uh, I wouldn't expect too much buying pressure though. Uh, yeah, this was yesterday. Yeah, not a whole lot of buying pressure, but at least compound coin will still be around. Uh, all right, let's see uh, what we got for news. Where are we at? 18 minutes. Wow, I'm actually pretty impressed with myself. All my rambling, and it's only been 18 minutes, and, we're, and we finally made it in the news for the day. Uh, Bitcoin wallet, no one wants to touch. Well, it's not that the guy wants to talk, touch it, but maybe the guy lost the keys to it. The U.S. is very worried about Bitcoin. It's finally doing something about it. Uh, we actually covered this a few days ago. Forbes is just late to the party. Bitcoin rose. Uh, so here's Market Watch doing some FOMO fear mongering. That's hilarious. See, this is why I don't like the front of page of Google News. It's sometimes it's slow and sometimes it's scammy. All right. You know, now now in this case, you know, it's actually okay because we're actually at the beginning of a bull market, but you know, there market is Market Watch might still do the same thing when Bitcoin hits like half a million or a million dollars. You know, it's like, no, you should be getting ready to short the market. All right, how much Bitcoin do you need to be the richest 1% of Bitcoin holders? Craig Wright does on a Satoshi claim. Uh, okay, Palestinian militant groups appeal for Bitcoin donations to promote jihad. Oh, uh, yeah, we've already covered this a few times in some videos. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, that's the thing. Once BitChute comes out with their live streaming service and it's fully decentralized, you know, I could actually tune into like Hamas live streams and then just watch them talk about how much they hate Israel and Jewish people. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. So it's like, you know, I'm actually getting a little worried. Like, I'm glad we're getting more. Well, I shouldn't say worried, all right? Because, you know, worrying is the pathway to Satan. As Jesse would always say, he didn't say in those exact words, but he said, you know, uh, Satan's your daddy kind of thing. Um, 
yeah, like everyone's gonna go kind of crazy wig net with the with the decentralization. And then you you know, for all the censorship, all the bad stuff that censorship does, right? It's the one good thing about it is, yeah, you do want to get rid of Hamas and you know, people who are obviously calling for clear violence. But now you can't remove that too. So what are you gonna do, right? We're gonna have more. We're gonna have more angry left wing, you know, Trump hater uh, haters running, ramming their van into like Trump tents, right? You know, uh, then they arrested the guy, right, in Florida. And of course, the fake news terrorist media, you know, waited like many days to kind of report on it. At least they're getting a little better with it. So it's gonna be pretty bad, you know. Like in fact, my uh, next movie idea, which was really a TV show. Uh, but possibly a movie, right? Because I'm actually, I was adapting a lot of my movie scripts to just TV shows because I could tell a better story if I just had, had, just had more time, right? It's going to be about the breakdown of order in society, right? Because everyone loses their shit, right? And then I started off with uh, uh, the assassination of, you know, a certain president, right? I mean, you know, whatchamacallit. So, uh, you know, the reason why I have to censor that is because I don't want the Google algorithm to mistakenly think, you know, I'm calling for violence or bullshit like that, right? and it's going to be very annoying. So, uh, yeah, and, that, and then I'll just portray as, you know, the liberals are very happy, like, yeah, he's finally dead, and then, and then it starts the Civil War, and then people, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you like, you know, maybe you idiots should not be so, you know, pro-violent, right? You know, so it, it'd be like a warning film. But it'd also be a dark comedy too, and it'd just be you know you, you know, have its uh, hilarious moments during uh, dark moments. Picard explode. Okay, so it's just mostly bullshit on the front of Google News. Uh, there was one thing that was interesting. Yeah, it was HSBC slashing some jobs. Uh, Fifty-four million dollars in XRP from America to Mexico. Well, hopefully those uh, illegal alien invaders get the uh, you know. They get, uh, they are, they're, you know, they get that nice chunk of money. Uh, Bitcoin shopping app Lolly teams up with Priceline, Glossier, Expedia, and 950 merchants and push for mainstream crypto adoption. Oh, that's very good, actually. Uh, yeah, that's actually really good. That's actually a lot of money being generated. So the fundamentals are getting stronger. So, you know, you know, that's what I care about because, you know, what's more likely a uh, situation that will cause Bitcoin to be at maximum a million dollars, right? At a at, uh, fever bull market pitch, right? You know, a hundred million dollars worth of trade activity a month, maybe like, you know, a million people throughout the whole world using Bitcoin, or uh, say $700 billion worth of Bitcoin and crypto transactions and 2 billion people using it all of a sudden. You know, which do you think is going to be much more likely to make Bitcoin a million dollars? That that's why that's why I look at the fundamentals in that point of view. It's actually more complicated by that, but I'm trying to keep it simple. But uh, that's basically that's basically what we're that's fundamentally what we're looking for because even all that complex shit is predicated on you know fundamental adoption, right? The more people that use something, and the more people that like it, the more valuable it is, right? So if someone hates something. They just won't use it eventually, right? Because they hate it. But, you know, that's overridden by the fact that there's like 10 people that love the same product, right? So, you know, you can't please everybody. But what? But you do the next best thing. You please most people. And if that fails, you please as many people as you can and hope it's above like, you know, 100 or something. And in this case, you know, uh, any idiot can use Bitcoin eventually. And that's what we want. We want even the idiots to be able to use it. Uh, and, and the idiots will be able to use it, and they shall. Fiat to crypto on ramp unlocks direct Bitcoin, Ethereum Litecoin purchases for mobile apps. So Celsius Networks is getting in on it. I don't even know who they are, but very good. Bitcoin may rally. Uh, uh, let's see, had hit half a million dollars. Well, that was my Bitcoin prediction video from last year, so he has to get on my level. In fact, why aren't I? Why aren't I as rich as this guy? Crypto app then calls out industry trouble, pumps Bitcoin, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, uh, tribalism in crypto has always been there forever. But, you know, it's it's stupid to think in terms of that. Like, it's really stupid. Because it's very easy to simply hold both, right? You know, it's not like real life where, like, you know, you really do have to belong to a tribe, right? You know, a political party, your skin color, your race, right? Because those things are a lot harder to just simply switch. You just can't, you actually cannot switch. 
uh, in a lot of cases, right? You know, uh, but cryptocurrency, you can because it's an object. It's not, you know, dealing with people. You know, you can buy and sell and come and go as you please. Kind of wish real life was just as free. All right, so let's just see what happened with HSBC. They uh, they destroyed 35,000 jobs, and they also dumped 100 billion assets. Uh, okay, uh, so what's going on? British multi, uh, blah, blah, blah. HSBC plans to terminate about 35,000 of its global staff, or 15% of its workforce over the next three years, with some job cuts due to tech and automation. In earnings call, uh, VAG also plans to ditch billions of dollars asked by the end. What? The strategy is to reallocate by removing more than 100 billion low returning risk weighted assets to support growth in our areas that promise higher returns. Oh, so they're going uh, they're going risky mode. Banks executive hope that reduction assets will be offset by other growth opportunities in profitable areas such as Middle East uh, and Asia. We implemented an RWA upgrade to be a low returning R. Uh, okay, fine. Ongoing change in the bank industry are putting pressure on legacy financial institutions are struggling to combat fintech disruption. Back in 2017, HSBC, which is Europe's largest bank, appointed a panel of advisors tasked with addressing uh, how to use blockchain, artificial intelligence, and biometrics in its business model. The panel is comprised of senior tech entrepreneurs from around the world and gaining blockchain and da 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 da. Uh, here are their tech advisors. Well, they got some pretty powerful people here. They got Token, they got some cybersecurity dude. There's got, wow, they got somebody who's in charge of Ripple. They got eBay. Um, and of course, you have some artificial intelligence people. Yeah, eventually, when our AI becomes, you know, mainstream and then becomes more usable, I'm totally going to use it in my video games, right? You know, people are like the NPCs are stupid and retarded, and we want to challenge. All right, let's see, let's see how you deal with the cheating artificial intelligence. Oh, the AI is too hard. <laughs> Actually, Tarkov kind of has that problem too. Like they they constantly uh, change the AI. Um, uh, basically the raiders and the scabs as they're called in the game like sometimes they're dumb as a rock but other times just laser beam headshot you instantly it's like it's like insane all right but of course they're a computer program so of course you just tell it to aim for the guy's head and then it's a computer so it's way faster than a human being ever could so yeah of course they'll just headshot you instantly it's what they're programmed to do Go to HSBC, the tech board facilitates the best adoption of approved customers, blah, blah, blah. It's why I've to address the chain last week by consulting uh, experts. The bank's profits before tax have nosedies from $20 billion to $13.3 billion in 2019, marketing, marking a 33% decline. Oh, no. Uh, we didn't make enough money. Uh, but with that being said, um, this is their revenue. Right? Wait, what did they actually say? Uh, profits before tax. Yeah, this is fucking net revenue. Oh, boo-hoo. All right, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Oh, uh, uh, we can't afford enough mansions. Oh, I only have five mansions instead of ten. Wah, wah. Oh, man. And then, and then people wonder, and then, and then especially conservative boomers, they're like, what, what do people want socialism? Why, 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 is, why are communist, the communists taking over America? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, I mean, at this point, I just don't want to explain this shit to anyone anymore. It's just, it's, it's just like, you know, it's exactly like what Jesus Christ said in, like, uh the the his parable about like lazarus the beggar and then like the the rich guy that would just ate sumptuously and then they both you know whatever right it, it's like you could come back from the dead and then warn them and then people will still not hear the word right of christ so it's kind of like similar to what's basically happening here it's like you know it's like people just don't just like you give them all the evidence and they still will refuse to believe it because they're like re like cognitive cognitive dissonance confirmation bias and they're just fucking retarded and it's just like all right i just don't want to deal with these idiots right and then uh, I'm, I'm glad that they get a lot of hate for it right because they deserve the hate because they they suck in all the resources and then they just tell everybody to go f themselves and uh you know you can't be doing that so yeah 
Uh, but with that being said, you know, Bernie Sanders will obviously lose to Trump pretty much no matter what, right? Uh, catastrophes aside. And uh, yeah, you know, the only thing I like about Bernie is that it's going to put a lot of pressure on Trump to fulfill his promises and to actually fucking do something. So, and then also we'll keep Trump honest because Bernie's definitely going to call out all the stupid shit that Trump does. Like the actual stupid shit. Like, why is our foreign policy hijacked by, you know, XYZ country, right? Because Bernie's actually not establishment. That, that much is clear because they're actually trying to steal the election from him. And it didn't work, right? They tried it in Iowa. They almost succeeded. But the amount of blowback that they got for it was... Because remember, these aren't conservatives they're dealing with, right? These are liberals. Liberals will fucking riot and, like, you know, commit violence to, you know, against injustice. Whereas conservatives don't do shit because, you know, we're fucking cowards. And eventually, uh, there will be a change to that eventually. I, I imagine, oh, maybe I'll have something to do with it. I mean, at that point, I mean, I'm going to be running my game. So, you know, uh, actually, I don't know. I won't have to worry about censorship too, too at that point. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll have to decide, right? God will uh, will guide me uh, in that decision. Uh, but with that being said, um, yeah, you don't fuck with the liberals. Right? As stupid as they are, you know, they really know how to get shit done. And they do have a lot of redeeming qualities that clearly, you know, allow them to get stuff done. Right? You just may not approve of their methods. Right? I mean, obviously, I don't. Right? But I can recognize, I can respect my enemy when, like, they actually know what they're doing. Right? You know, conservatives need to, you know, catch up and up their game, too. So, uh, yeah, so Bernie, uh, from, from all, from the way it looks, Bernie is just ahead in pretty much all polls, so he should have the nomination. So, HSBC says, that's now entering deep fundamental restructuring, like focus analysts can control as opposed to markets and other external factors. Oh, that's pretty interesting. As part of its overall strategy, the bank will close out a third of its U.S. branches. Wow, and trim down units in Europe will also consolidate divisions to save costs. HSBC unveils its restructuring amid falling interest rates and the threat of the coronavirus, which could have a significant impact on 2020 earnings. Oh, yeah, coronavirus. I forgot about that. I really don't like this picture, but I guess we'll stick with it. Um, yeah, I guess we can keep this going. Anyway, uh, if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from. More on my YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash the lemon factor BTC. As usual, the uh, view count is just so underreported. But uh, yeah, I just don't like YouTube. But uh, luckily, we have Bitchu, and you know, uh, I'm going to enjoy and abuse their uh, really nice uh, instant processing times, right? Uh, for now, before the next massive wave of censorship hits. So, I mean, at this point, Bitchu is still like the better place. But I, you know, I still want you know a presence everywhere so you know just gotta just gotta it's, it's like my video game playing right he's got to farm every single day right just co go in farm your little bits here and there and then uh, yeah you know eventually after a couple of years it'll compound to the point like wow you know i'm pretty strong you know so yeah so anyway uh obviously i'm done for the day uh the rest of your day or night uh, i've got a lot of programming research to do um you know i haven't really been listening to too much jesse Lee Peterson the past few days, but that's because I've been preoccupied with the programming. But I mean, I kind of already have starting to run into more re uh, repeating things, uh, concepts that he's repeating. So, uh, so I mean, I'm, I think I'm pretty much at that point. I, you know, I mean, I still want to listen to his clips where people call in with their various problems. Like, oh, so that's what this is, right? So it's just a learning experience, right? You know, like why do I have to commit the mistakes in life when I could just simply, you know, t uh, just simply take advantage of the people who have already done the mistakes, right? In this case, I outsource my screwing up so that I don't have to do it, right? You know, so like, yeah, it's it's like very high IQ, and plus, it's a lot better, right? It's like, wow, you know, it's like these people have a really messed up life. It's like, wow, but I'm not in that situation. Wow, and it's like, yeah, well, I'm glad I'm glad I'm not that person, right? And 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 then it's like, okay, so maybe I shouldn't do this action because because. That's what the caller did this time. We know how that worked out for him. So it's like maybe. <laughs> so you know, it works. For, it works for me. Works for me. Anyway, I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. Uh, I got. I gotta re. I got. I gotta re lubricate my eyes. So, yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching, and always remember Judson Chan, JMC Coin, four four coin. 
Well, it looks like crypto stabilizing. It's going to want to go up, so that's good. And, well, what can I say? The exotic cryptos, you know, it's going to, you know, continue to be kind of crappy for a while, at least until the money flows back in. Uh, I don't, again, I don't know why the rich are being timid. Uh, but with that being said, they don't seem to want to be dumping the markets either. So, I don't know. I, I guess we're just going to have to wait this out. We're going to have to wait this out. And I really don't like this uh, thumbnail, but you know what? Since I'm complaining so much about it, um, no. Uh, hmm. You know, it is about HSB slashing jobs, so this X might make people think, oh, they're Xing jobs. Okay. Uh, it definitely pops out, but I mean, this is just so weird. Well, all right, we'll we'll, we'll go with the shitty blue uh, <clears throat> thingamajig. 